Hello everyone, welcome to the Archipelago Edits live stream. My name is Liam, I'm one of the developers here at Archipelago where we create Lightroom presets and creative profiles for photographers. And in this series, we focus on a different photographic style each episode uh, whilst editing images submitted by the community. And this time around, we're gonna be taking a look at indoor photos. So while it's not really a style, it's more an environment you might find yourself shooting in, uh, as has already been mentioned in the chat here, it can sometimes be quite a difficult uh, environment to shoot in. So I'll be showing you some images that I've picked from the submissions sent through to us, editing with various different Archipelago and Quest presets, uh, and of course, tools sharing some techniques and tips for getting the most out of your images in Lightroom and also tips to help you get better images when you're actually shooting indoor photos as well. So very excited to get into things uh, shortly. But yeah, like I said, these are images that are submitted by the community. Uh, you'll find actually a link in the description to submit your images. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and submit for future streams. Uh, they do need to be raw files to be considered. I know we've had a few JPEGs sent through, but unfortunately we can't use those. So do make sure they're raw format. Make sure you replace the file name with your full name and your Instagram handle uh, if you'd like to. And we'll be picking from that pool for future live streams. And if your image gets selected, so the five photographers whose images I'll be editing with today, each of those photographers will get a free preset collection of their choice. Um, so yeah, if you see your image appear, if you've already submitted, uh, you'll be winning a free preset collection of your choice. Just reach out to us at support at archipelagopresets.com and we'll get that new set, uh, that free set sent out to you. Uh, but if you haven't yet submitted, make sure to do that if you'd like to. Like I said, the link's in the description of the video. So we'll get underway shortly. I can see there's loads of people on here already, which is amazing. I know Chine was here like half an hour before the stream started, which is incredible. I love it. So we've got uh, Mary's on. I've seen you before, Mary. Thanks for joining again. Adorito's on again. Amy P, I've definitely seen your name before. Thank you so much for joining us again. Sarah's on. Joey says, hey, from Ottawa. Amazing, I was on your side of the pond last week. I came over and stayed in Toronto for a week and then went over to New York. So I'm a little bit jet lagged. So uh, you're gonna need to look after me during this stream. I'm quite tired. Look at this, loads of people on. This is awesome. All right, let's dive into the uh, first image. In fact, before we do that, uh, I've got some exciting news to share to all of you that are tuned in live. Uh, we're gonna be doing a giveaway. We like to do giveaways. Like I mentioned, all photographers that are featured in the stream will be getting a free preset collection. But not only that, we're gonna be giving away a free uh, preset collection to you in the chat. So if you're here in the chat, you're in with a chance of winning uh, a copy of the upcoming Archipelago Halite presets. So if you're here in the chat, just interact as we go through the stream, we'll be choosing someone to win the pre-release copy of Halite at the end of this session. So do stick around till the end uh, and we'll be announcing at least one person to win Halite as a pre-release copy before anyone else gets their hands on it. You might not have heard about Halite yet or you might have seen some of the sneak peeks on our Archipelago Collective Facebook group. Uh, we've put a couple of little peeks out there but it's an incredible set. I'm gonna be doing a full live stream uh, in a week and a half's time to showcase that set and what's kind of coming out with it. Uh, but it's incredible and you might get your hands on it much, much earlier than everyone else by winning it today. So do stick around, make sure to interact in the chat as we go through and we'll choose someone at the end. Yes, as Lauren says, ask Liam all the hard editing questions in the chat. Like I said, I've got jet lag, so don't make it too hard. Let's keep things a little bit light, but yes, go ahead. If you've got any questions as we go through, make sure to ask, I'll try and answer them. If I miss it or if I am unable to answer on the live stream, I have got some of my, uh, Archipelago colleagues in the uh, chat here. So Lauren's here, I know Richard was on as well. Uh, so they can dive in and give a hand if I miss anything. Mary says, love the giveaways. Of course, who doesn't like free stuff? All right, so got the first image here. This one by Josiane. Uh, and I'll kind of go through and I'll, I'll walk through my editing process for this, talk about the presets that I'm gonna use, any of the tools, uh, but also talk a little bit about the image, how it's been captured, what works, uh, all that kind of stuff to kind of give you an idea and share some tips on uh, what you might do differently when you're capturing images in indoor settings as well. So like I said, this image here is from Josie and you can see the name up at the top left here. Uh, you can also see the EXIF data there as well. So if you're intrigued to know how they captured this, the settings used, lens, that kind of thing, 
you'll see that in the top left along with the photographer's name. Some of them have got Instagram handles as well. So if you do want to check out more of their work, you can do that. All right, so let's dive into this image. So gorgeous photo, amazing photo here from Josiane. This is obviously a wedding shot where it um, looks like the reception. So we have the couple here and we have all of the guests in the background there. Really, really pretty shot. And the first thing that I'm gonna kind of talk about is, is the light as we tend to look at with uh, a lot of photos. Light is generally the most important thing. Uh, and this one to me looks like it's uh, artificial light. So it looks like a flash possibly on camera, possibly off camera flash. I'm not too sure, I don't know whether it's bounced, but it's definitely a flash illuminating the, uh, the subjects here, the couple. And you can see it is quite nicely diffused. If you look at the shadow under the table, you can see that that's quite soft. So nice uh, illumination on the subjects, in this case, the couple, uh, and it's nicely diffused. So we've not got any harsh shadows being cast anywhere. So really, really nice job, Josiane, in getting this uh, exposed the way it is. It looks like this was shot at nighttime, like a lot of receptions are, so you can see the windows at the back there. There's no light coming in from those windows. But what you can see is there's candles on the tables. There's some uh, little fairy lights here on this table. And I can also see what looks like a spotlight reflected in the windows. So I'm guessing there are some spotlights illuminating the room there as well. So all of that type of lighting, uh, lighting sorry, tends to be very, very warm. And obviously, when we talk about the flash, uh, the, the flashlight tends to be very cool. So as you can see here, this is quite a neutral look and that's because the white balance will be uh, pulled from the brightest part of the image. Uh, but you can see that we've got this warm lighting in the background. Now what works really well with this image is that the, the flash is the main source of light illuminating the subjects. So had the flash not been quite as bright or the uh, lights inside the venue were brighter, you might have an issue where you get a mixed lighting scenario. So when we talk about indoor photos, mixed lighting is something that you come across loads. And it's unfortunately something that is sometimes unavoidable, unavoidable, but sometimes it is, and you can actually make corrections before you take the photo. Now what you'll find is if you have warm light and cool light, both hitting the subject, you're gonna find it really, really difficult to uh, white balance, to get kind of consistent skin tones and just colors and tonality in general. So that's something you really generally want to avoid. Now, it doesn't mean you want to avoid having mixed light full stop. It can be something really nice to have in your images. Uh, you can get really creative looks. I know Lise, one of our team members, does this quite a, a lot where we have like a warm light in the, in the shot with natural light mixed in as well. But what you definitely don't want is to have that on the subject. So if you've got a subject that's illuminated on one side with daylight and on the other side with like a tungsten light, you're gonna find that really difficult to, to balance things out. So this image is great. It's a great starting point. It's been captured really nicely because we've got a nice consistent light uh, and this is gonna work really well. But that's just something to consider. If you have control over the light or if you have control of where you're gonna place the subjects, you definitely want to try and avoid having mixed lighting on the subjects. Uh, if that happens and it's out of your control, you've got a couple of options. You can, when it comes to editing the images, um, I actually don't have, uh, none of the images that were submitted to us had that. I was looking out to see if there was, but there weren't any. Um, but if you have that, you can actually go in and sort of hand edit and use different masks and things to try and balance it out. It's very, very difficult. Uh, or the other alternative is to go for a black and white, you know, monochromatic edit. So definitely something to think about, but this image is lovely. Really, really nice starting point. You can see loads of chat going off in here. Let me see if we can catch up. A lot of excitement for Halite. Yes, it's an incredible set. I can't wait to show you more of, of that uh, preset collection. Like I said, join the stream next, uh, it's in a week and a half's time. Um, join that stream if you want to see more of that. Unless you win them, of course, and then you'll have your hands on them anyway. So excited, my first live with my favorite presets watching straight from Mars. Charlie, you're in Mars, that's incredible. Uh, bounce flash for, or a bounce flash from the flash in the window. Yeah, that's a good point actually. So it could be bounced off the, it looks like there's a wall behind them. So in this case, that might be why it's so nicely diffused. It might be bounced either upwards or backwards to bounce the light off uh, the ceiling or the wall. Dug the Godox out for a while. They aren't seating well on the Canon R3. That, uh, yeah. All right, let's start editing this one then. So I'm just gonna do a couple of little things to tidy this up to begin with. So I'm just gonna straighten the image. 
Uh, let's try and auto. Yeah, that's looking much better. And I'm probably going to crop this just so that the uh, subjects are towards the center of the frame. So I've got a little bit more of an even setup. I think somewhere around there looks good to me. Uh, Exposure is looking okay. Maybe need to brighten it a little bit, uh, but I think white balance is fine. I'm happy with that. Just going to check out lens corrections. Yep, they're on as defaults. So that's all good. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, the first thing I'm going to do before I actually apply a preset on this image is there are quite a few things that are a little bit distracting to me in this photo. Uh, and that's another thing to really consider. If you, if you think about when we're shooting outdoors, we, of course, get distractions in the backgrounds of our images. But you tend to be able to position subjects in such a way where you can avoid that. But when you're inside and you're limited with space and the environment is kind of a very limiting factor, you can't always eliminate distractions in the background in the same way you can do when you're shooting outdoors. So obviously, in this case, um, Rosianne wanted to get the subjects here with the guests in the background, lovely photo. But what we've actually got is quite a few things that are quite distracting in the background here. So things like uh, fire exit signs, which are a bane of any wedding photographer's life. Uh, we've got like wall lights that aren't on speakers and uh, AC units and reflections, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna do a very quick bit of tidying up. Uh, it will be very slapdash, so don't judge me on this. I would usually do this in uh, Photoshop, but for the purposes of this, I'm just going to quickly use the updated uh, options within the um, masking panels up at the top here. So we used to have just the clone and stamp tools uh, and the healing brush, but now we have this uh, new tool that was introduced fairly recently, so a newer version of Lightroom, which is the Content Aware Remove. Uh, so with this, it does a fairly good job, uh, unless it's something really complex. But in this case, I think it's gonna it's gonna work out. So let's have a quick look. I'm just gonna try and get rid of a few of these things very quickly, very roughly. Like I say, don't judge. These are very rough edits. So yeah, it's great to have these kinds of tools in Lightroom. You will still find that Photoshop is um, superior for kind of getting uh, really nice results for this sort of thing, but uh, it definitely does a fairly good job for a piece of software that does all the other things that it does. Uh, let's get rid of these little reflections in there. Get rid of that wall light. Get rid of that speaker. So another tip when you're using the any of the spot removal options in Lightroom, you can quickly resample where it's uh, selected the mask from. So if I jump down here and select, uh, let's just switch it so you can see it a little bit more visibly. So if I do like heal, I'm going to choose that. So you can see where it's selected the the area to mask from. And this is the same with this, but you just don't visually see where it's pulling it from. But if you press the forward slash key on your keyboard, keep tapping that, you can see it's moving this around to different areas. Um, so I'll just delete that point. But yeah, that's the same thing that happens here. So if I press forward slash on that, it's gonna sample from slightly different areas each time. And you might find that one time it looks okay and, and another time it doesn't. So uh, nice little top tip there. If it looks a bit janky, you can just press the forward slash key and that'll sample from a different area. So that will do for now, just a nice simple cleanup. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a preset. So I think for this, I'm gonna use Quest 9, which is Atlas SE. This is a special edition Atlas set. So Atlas was an archipelago preset collection. It's since been retired, uh, but we have done a special edition version uh, of this preset as part of Quest. So Quest, for anyone that doesn't know, is our membership where you get a free preset collection that's released each and every month. You get access to download uh, previous collections from the archive store, you can purchase those, and you also get a discount off the regular Archipelago presets. Membership is just $8 a month. And like I say, you're gonna get a new set of presets each and every month. Uh, so if you are interested, if you join Quest today, you can get Quest 21, which is this current month's preset. I'll be using 
that in a little bit. Uh, but you can also go back and download the previously released sets prior to your subscription, including Quest 9, which will be available in the archive store. So let's go ahead and use this. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for quite a neutral looking edit. So I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna go for AQ093. So now that I've applied the preset, I'm just gonna bring the exposure up a little bit. Uh, just ignore this horrendous mess here from the, uh, from the removal of the speaker, but you get the idea. So I think, that's got a little bit brighter, somewhere around there, that looks good to me. So the white balance, I'm definitely happy with, I think it looks really nice, very natural. I think the preset's done a really nice job of kind of creating a nice stylistic look, but also keeping the blue in the suit here, which is important. Uh, I'm not gonna play around the profile. The south profile uh, in this essentially adds this warmth to the image, and I don't really want that. So I'm gonna leave that set to zero, which is the default. And uh, let's have a look tell you what I do want to do. So obviously this image um, is benefiting from the fact that the couple are really well illuminated and the guests, while you can see them, they're sort of dropped back into the into a little bit more of the darkness. Um, so the emphasis really is on the couple. So I'm gonna push that a little bit further. So I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, Quest 18's Subject Pop tool. So Subject Pop will use AI to decipher where the subject is and where the background is. And essentially it will darken the background and keep the subjects uh, as they are. So you can see without, that's what it looks like. And with, that's what it looks like. So now I can use the amount slider to set that exactly where I want. So probably, I don't wanna go too crazy. It's just a little bit of an extra pop that I wanna achieve. So let's take a look at where we're at so far. That's before and after. Looking very good. And I think I'll use another tool from, let's go for Redwood, which is an Archipelago preset that's available on archipelagopresets.com. I'm gonna use the Paintly tool, which again, selects the background. And in this case, it softens up the background. So if you've got distracting elements, things like that, uh, or you just kind of want to make the background a little bit more subdued, you can do that with Paintly. So this is it at zero and this is it at 200. I'm not gonna go all the way up, but I think a little bit of this is just gonna, again, soften up the background, draw the eye to the subjects. So that's gonna be really nice. I think one other thing I could do is just use the Skin Hue Plus tool. This is part of the AI tool set. Uh, the AI tool set is a free preset collection that you can get your hands on simply by signing up to the Archipelago Presets newsletter. Um, so this uses the AI functionality in the newer versions of Lightroom to select various different things like subjects and sky and all that kind of stuff. Uh, some fantastic tools in there. I'll be uh, using this throughout the rest of this session. But I'm gonna go for Skin Hue Plus, which just selects the subjects. And now I can actually drag the slider to set the skin hue. So that's it at zero, which is how it was before. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of an increase just to kind of add a bit more magenta into the skin. So I think somewhere around there, 84. That's looking really nice and natural to me. So again, let's take a look at the before and after. So that's the unedited image. And that's the edit. I'll show you this side by side. Zoom in on the subjects there. So again, love how uh, Atlas has kept the blue in the uh, waistcoat here. Skin tone's looking super nice. And then if we just move to an area where you can see the background, again, you can still see all the guests there, but you're not distracted by any particular element in the background. It's softened it up. That's both with the subject pop tool darkening down the background and also the painterly tool just to kind of soften up the details there. All right, let's have a look at the chat, see if I can catch up because I know there's a lot going on in there. Thank you so much for all the interaction. Uh, so Lauren's posted a couple of great links in there as well. Definitely check those out when you have the time. We've got some uh, amazing videos that cover, cover some of the things that I'm talking about uh, on our YouTube channel. So definitely make sure you're subscribed and go and check that stuff out. Uh, let's have a look. Quests, Quest and the new masks made me go back to Lightroom from Capture One. So happy I did. Tell me about it. Uh, yeah, Joel, the the more recent versions of Lightroom, the last few versions have just been absolutely amazing. They just added so many great tools, you know, the updates to the masks, the uh, preset amount slider, the AI stuff, 
it's been awesome. We've been loving it definitely as developers as well and trying to take advantage of all of that goodness for our presets. And you're going to see a lot more amazing stuff to come from that. Uh, Michael says, more AI, the better. Yes, I agree. Danielle Cat is on again. Amazing. Thanks for joining. Pretty amazing technology. Yeah, I agree completely. Obsessed with Painterly, says Bridget. Yeah, thank you. Colin, a 10,000 image webinar as a watch listen. Yeah, nice. Love it. All right, cool. So first image done. Again, gorgeous image here by Rosianne. Thank you so much for submitting. You are going to get a free preset collection of your choice. So if you reach out to us on Archipelago uh, on the support email, which is support at archipelagopresets.com, we will get your free preset collection over to you. But thank you so much for submitting. Okay, on to the next image. So something quite different here. Uh, this one by Leonie May Wedding Photography. Uh, gorgeous photo, I love this, really, really cool. This is shot in London, it looks like it's at the Blackfriars uh, train station. Uh, so very, very cool shot. It's uh, obviously very different from the last one where we had artificial light, which was the main light source. In this one, we've just got natural light. You know, there's no artificial light uh, in this really. It's just the natural light and there's a lot of it, mainly coming in from the left-hand side of the frame, uh, but there's a little bit coming from behind the subjects. It's, it's nicely illuminated. What you will notice is this was shot at ISO 500. Uh, 1 350th of a second f 2.8 so it's, it's relatively dark uh, but Leonie's exposed it well for the subjects uh, so it looks really nice and, and balanced which is lovely so very very different this is kind of more like that uh, not really cave like because it's not dark behind the subjects but you know you've got the light coming in from the sides and a little bit from behind so again very very different uh, and, but I like the fact that Leone has exposed this for the subjects, um, so it's exposed really nicely. There's plenty of detail there. Didn't really matter about what was outside the windows. That wasn't important. So letting that kind of blow is is absolutely fine. So I think this is really nicely, really nicely done. Great palette to start with. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of uh, tidying up. I'm just going to set the uh, the straight and the angle correct somewhere around there. I think looks about right. <laughs> this person on the edge of the frame is a little bit distracting so I'm just gonna uh, crop in from the edge there probably somewhere I, I want to keep London on the sign there because I think that's probably quite important because I'm guessing it's an important location for the uh, for the couple here uh, maybe not but I'm gonna keep London because I think it's quite a cool part of the scene uh, and yeah I'm gonna go around about there so exposure is looking pretty good and we'll leave it as it is for now. I'll apply the preset and then decide if I need to increase or decrease it, but it's looking pretty good where it is. Like I said, it's nicely exposed. Uh, white balance is looking okay. I'm probably gonna warm up just a tiny little bit. Yeah, a tiny little bit of an increase in the exposure, but that's looking really good to me. So let's have a look. Uh, I'm gonna use X-Film. I know that was mentioned in the chat earlier. So let's go ahead and use an X-Film preset. Now, I probably don't wanna go for an overly warm edit for this, I think. Um, with this type of urban scene, it kind of suits having a slightly cooler tone. So I'm probably going to go for one of the cool tone presets in this, maybe X-Film 2 or X-Film 4, but let's have a quick look. Uh, X-Film is available on archipelagopresets.com. Uh, so yeah, you see, one does look really nice, but I think I want to go for something a bit cooler. Probably 4. Let's go for X-Film 4. But then what I will do is just warm the temperature up just a little bit just so that the skin tones look natural to the unedited image so I probably go somewhere around there so it still has that little bit of a cool tone uh, but it's kind of nice and warm on the skin tones there and where the lights coming in so we've got the character profile that's set to 100 as default this mutes the shadows mutes the highlights it kind of gives that crushed uh, look uh, that you would get with expired film which is why it's called X film uh, so I'm going to play around with that. I don't think I want to have too much of that. I'm going to go for something a little bit more clean, uh, clean kind of modern filmic rather than something really nostalgic. So I'm probably going to bring it down maybe all the way, maybe a little tiny bit. I'm going to bring it down to about 12, 12 or 13. So it's got a little bit of that, but not too much. 
So that's looking good. Uh, one of the tools in this set is called Texture Plus, and what that basically does is it just resets the texture. Uh, this preset kind of reduces the texture to give that a little bit of a softer look, a bit more filmic, uh, but I kind of want to maintain um, the details in this because again, that urban scene is a bit more grungy, you kind of want to have that. So I'm going to use Texture Plus just to set that. Uh, there is grain on this as default as part of the preset. Uh, you can remove that, but I'm going to leave it on because I quite like it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just looking at the subjects here and obviously the light's coming in from the left of the frame. We've got this subject here who's facing the light and their face is well illuminated, but the other subject which is facing away, their face is a little bit darker. So I'm just going to use some masks to correct that. So I'm going to go up to the masking panel. And what's really handy is we actually have uh, lots of new masks. This is part of the AI functionality. Uh, and down here you'll see it's recognized the people in the scene. So with this, I'm gonna go ahead and select person two, which is this person here. And then I can choose either the entire person or parts of them. So I'm gonna go for the face skin because that's the bit that I want to focus on. Create the mask and now it's just uh, created a mask for the face. So then I can go ahead and bring up the shadows a little bit and the exposure. I'm not gonna to go too crazy. Again, I want it to look natural. So um, I'm gonna keep their, their face a little bit darker than the subject on the left. But I think maybe somewhere around there is good. So I'm gonna hit return. So that's looking good. Again, I've got a nice balanced image to start with. Uh, so let's have a look at some tools. I'm gonna to use maybe Silver Reflector. This is something I use on a lot of my images. Uh, what Silver Reflector does is it mimics the look of using an actual reflector where you bounce light onto the subjects. And what that will typically do is make the subjects brighter. And therefore, if you expose it correctly, the background will be a little bit darker. So you'll see the effect applies to both the subject and the background. So apply that and then the default is 100 and with the amount slider I can just back that off or increase that. Again, I'm not going to go too crazy. I just want to make sure that the eye is drawn to the subjects there and not anywhere else in the scene. It is quite busy. Um, so I definitely don't want to distract from the subjects. So I'm going to set it to 43. And then I think the other thing that I want to do is because this is so bright on the left side of the frame, uh, I'm definitely finding that my eye is drawn across this way and we don't want that. We want the subjects to be the first thing that you look at. So I'm gonna use a graduated filter to darken down this side of the frame. So I can do that by pressing the M key. That's gonna activate the graduated filter. And now I can just drag that across. If I hold down shift, it'll keep it so that it's um, perfectly vertical or horizontal. And then I can drag this across to where I want it. So probably, yeah, probably across to about here, I would say. But I don't want it to affect the subject at all. So what you can actually do with this is you can go in here and you can intercept the mask with select subject. So that's now going to select them. And then all I want to do with that is just uh, dive into the subject itself and invert. And now it's going to apply the graduated filter, but it's going to mask out the subject so they're not affected by it. So now I can go ahead and decrease the exposure. I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit just so that there's a little bit more of that um, shadow down here. I'm going to probably bring the blacks down a tiny little bit as well. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think somewhere around there looks good to me. So let me just turn that off really quickly. That's before and that's after. So again, it's just about drawing your eye to this area of the frame. Uh, I do want to keep the light down here where the train is because I think that's quite a cool part of the shot, but you definitely don't want your eye drawn over here because there's not really anything important over there. So that's looking really good. And then I think we could go ahead and use Painterly again from Redwood, again, just to uh, soften up the details in the background. So. Uh, painterly doesn't affect the subjects, it only affects the background, so I can just click that. It's going to apply the masks and then I can decide where I want it to be. So I don't want to go too crazy, but probably around about, probably leave it at the default 100. So there we go, that's looking really good to me. This is the before and this is after. That's with Xfilm 4 uh, and a few tools from the various different sets there, as well as some hand editing to eliminate the subject on the right's face and bring your eye to the subjects in the shot there as well. I'll show you the side by side. Cool location, says Denise, yes. Crop tool being forever underrated. I agree, Mary. 
uh, always suggest Archipelago to new photographers just for the sheer amount of generous education and interaction and kindness. Oh, that's incredibly kind, Shelby. Thank you so much. We definitely feel it's a very important part of this. You know, it's not just about creating a tool and putting it out there. It's about showing how to use it, how to get the most out of uh, the, the work that you create, inspiring people, all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, we really appreciate it. That is just right, Liam. Thank you so much. Has to be an even number, come on. Don't tell me that, because I'm that kind of person. I usually have to go for an even number, but I can't be doing that on a live stream. That would be terrible. What a stunning photo, says Lloyd. All right, cool. So, another tip I didn't know, says Shelby. There we go. All right, so there you go. That's before and that is after. Now, another option with this image would be a black and white edit. And since I've already got all of my masks uh, applied and things, I could go ahead and just apply a black and white preset. If I was gonna do this, I'd probably go for Wayfarer. So Wayfarer 9. I'd probably go for that and I would probably just go into the tone curve and just bring down the left side of the tone curve. And that's just gonna, if I go before, you can see, if you zoom in here, this is before and that's after tweaking the tone curve. Again, just for that more sort of modern look rather than having the uh, slight crushed shadows there. Uh, so that's probably what I'd do. Um, obviously it's gonna keep all of the, the masks that we added. Again, this is without any of those masks and that's with. So definitely quite a, a big transformation of the image, but yeah, that's what I'll probably go with for a black and white, but let me just undo that and go back to the color. There we go. Lovely stuff, so amazing photo. Again, Leonie, amazing photo. Thank you so much for submitting it. Uh, you'll be getting a free preset collection of your choice as well. Do reach out to us. Okay, so next image, something different again. We've got this, uh, this shot here looks like it's on a bed. We've got the whole family there. Lovely, uh, lovely family shot. Um, and this one's shot, it's obviously a very dark uh, scene because this one's shot at ISO 2500, uh, one 320th of a second f1.4. Uh, so quite challenging in terms of the amount of light and you can see obviously there's, it looks like a window uh, just out of shot to the right that's illuminating the family here. So some subjects have more light on their face, some are more obstructed. So this is where the challenge is gonna come in on this image. All right, so let's start by bringing up the exposure. And it's a fairly underexposed image, so I need to bring that up quite a bit. And as soon as I do that, you can see, don't know how well it comes across on stream, but you can see there is a fair bit of noise here with it being shot at ISO 2500 and being underexposed. Um, so it is something to really think about when you shoot in. Obviously, if you need to use a high ISO, absolutely go for it. And you will do with you know, something like this where you can't use a tripod, you know, you've got subjects that move in, things like that. Um, it's worth playing around with your camera and doing some tests. What you might find is sometimes shooting slightly underexposed and not quite going as high with the ISO will get cleaner results. And with other cameras, you'll find that if you actually increase the ISO and got a more neutral exposure, so not underexposed, uh, you'll actually get less noise, even though you use the higher ISO. So definitely check that out. All cameras are different. The way that they use the sensors is different, all that kind of stuff. But uh, you will find that some will deal better with underexposing and bringing up. Others will deal better with actually using a higher ISO uh, and, and won't introduce as much noise as using a relatively high ISO and then having to increase the exposure. But the, the good, uh, the good news with this image is there's not much color noise in there. It's quite a, it's quite a nice look to the noise. It kind of almost looks like grain. So it's definitely not something that I'm gonna worry about. I'm not gonna you know, do anything to remove that from the image. I think it looks quite nice in this case. Uh, so I'm gonna go somewhere around there with the exposure. I'm gonna have a quick look at the white balance. I feel like we need to warm this up a decent amount. Probably somewhere around there is looking good to me. So for this one, let's use the latest Quest set, Quest 21. The Quest 21 is this month's uh, preset collection. So if you are a subscriber, you will have been able to download this one as part of your Quest subscription. This month, if you're not yet subscribed, uh, go ahead and subscribe and you can download this free preset collection immediately as soon as you've subscribed. Um, this is uh, gonna be available until the end of this month and after that, I'll go into the archive. You can still get it, but you'll have to purchase it if you weren't subscribed at the time. Um, so yeah, Quest 21, this is a Wayfarer special edition set. So again, this is in the family of the original Archipelago Wayfarer presets, but this is a slightly uh, new direction in terms of tonality. 
um, three brand new color presets, a new creative profile, and some AI tools in there as well. So let's go ahead and use AQ21.3. This is quite a nice warm preset. You see how much it warms the image up there. And what you saw there is it just took a second or two for the masks that are built into the preset to take effect. So it was a little bit darker first and then it applied the masks. And that's just it figuring out where the subjects are and the background are. So now we've got a nice image here. I love the warm tone in. We can bring the exposure up just a little bit. Now what I'm actually looking at when I'm looking at the exposure is the subjects uh, in the middle are a little bit darker. So uh, I'd say probably these two subjects are a little bit darker. Uh, and then these two subjects have more light on them. So I'm just kind of exposing the, exposing the image for the subject in the middle, somewhere probably around about there. And then we'll deal with the overexposed areas um, with some masks in a moment. So let me have a little look. I'm gonna crop this, I think. I'm gonna crop the side in here, just so that I think the composition is a little bit more balanced with the family. I'm kind of getting rid of this area of wall which was in a very severe very dark shadow looks like we've got a light switch there as well so i'm just going to crop that in a little bit there but i do actually like really like this pattern on the blanket here and i don't want to crop in too much on the subject's head there so i think somewhere around there looks good to me maybe down a little bit more yeah that looks good to me all right cool so nice balanced crop uh, by the way, this image is from Stephanie. I didn't mention that before. So Stephanie, uh, which is on Instagram at Stephanie Ray. Uh, let's have a little look. So we've got the preset applied. Now with a, uh, the Quest 21 Wayfarer presets, uh, you'll actually see that some masks are applied, like I mentioned before, as part of the preset. But down here, you've actually got some tools that let you adjust that much easier. So you can, of course, go into the mask panel and, and tweak them. But if you just choose the subject mask, uh, preset down here, you'll notice nothing happens, but what it's now done is selected just the subject mask. Now I can use the amount slider at the top left uh, and I can adjust that so I can drag it left or right. And what you can see with the subject mask is it's going to um, bring out the detail in the subjects by lifting the shadows. So I'm going to go, let's go nice and high, I think, with that. And then we've got the background mask. If I again choose that, and now I can use the amount slider to either decrease or increase. So it makes these presets really flexible. You can decide if you want to go for something a little bit lighter in area or something a little bit darker and kind of pop the subjects out. And that's what I want to do in this case. The background is not super important in this image. So I'm going to bring that all the way to the left. So that's going to darken down the background, but I've brought out a little bit more detail in the subject's face. So really liking this, I'm going to play around with the new Horizon profile, which adds a little bit of a warm overtone and it also mutes the highlights. You can see that there as well. So I'm going to bring it up relatively high. Loving what it's doing to the tonality and their outfits and skin tones, but it, I'm finding that there is a little bit of green in the background and that could be because it's underexposed and shot at higher. So you will sometimes find that these kinds of tones uh, creep into an image where they wouldn't if it was a well exposed image. Um, so we can actually go ahead and correct that nice and easily. Again, in the mask panel, create a new mask, select background. So that's just gonna create a mask that selects the background and not the subjects. And now I can just use the, the tint to offset that little bit of green that's been introduced. Uh, so probably somewhere around there. So fairly subtle, I don't wanna go too crazy. Uh, but what we could also do as well is, although the noise on this side is not too bad, there is a little bit of moiré on this side, so some colour noise starting to creep in. So while we've got this selected, I can just go ahead and increase the slider for that. Just a little bit, just to soften that up. Okay, that's looking really good. Let's see, what else do we want to do? Probably silver reflector, because I always like to use that. Yeah, definitely. So silver effects, again, I'm just looking at the background versus the subjects and finding balance. So I think a darker background suits this. Okay, somewhere around there is looking good. And then the last thing that I need to do is just fix the overexposure on a couple of the people in the photo. So I'm gonna select the uh, mask for people. You can see it's found them there. Uh, it's kind of combined two people into one mask, I think. Yep, uh, but that's okay because that's, yeah, it's gonna work. It's mainly this subject here that we've got an issue with. So I'm gonna select that person. And I think we'll leave it selected to the entire person, create the mask. And now I can go ahead and just back off the exposure just a little bit. And just bring the highlights down over there as well. Again, not too over the top, because, you know, it's natural in this scene that 
some subjects are going to have more light on them than others. So I don't want to balance it completely, but I definitely don't want to uh, have overexposure on one particular person. So let's go with that. Uh, let's go people again, select people. And I think if we go for entire person on this one and then just bring the exposure up just a tiny little bit somewhere there and then I can bring the overall image exposure back down a tiny touch so that's looking good I think I think I'm happy with that let me have a look at the before so there's before we've come quite a long way in this one there's the after I'll show you the side by side there as well so obviously this is with quest 21 wayfair se that's this month's current quest preset uh, we've used a couple of the masks that are built in, the AI masks that are built into that preset. We've used the silver reflector from the AI tool set. Again, that's a free preset collection for our newsletter subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed to the Archipelago newsletter, uh, do that and you'll get this uh, AI tool set for free. So if you just go to archipelagopresets.com forward slash newsletter hyphen sign up. Uh, you can sign up for it there and you'll be sent AI tool set for free. Uh, played around the profile, done a couple of little hand edits there as well, but that's looking super nice. Love the warm edit on this. Gorgeous photo by Stephanie. Thank you again, Stephanie, for sending that one through. All right, let me see if I can catch up on the chat, because again, there has been loads. This is stunning. Also, outfit and decor colors are on point. Yeah, definitely. Again, that's another important factor, you know, when we think about really any photography, but certainly with indoor where you've got maybe a little bit more control uh, in some cases around the color palette that's in the scene. Certainly with something like this where, you know, you can choose the the kind of colors that are in the scene. You know, if you give a little bit of advice to the to the family, um, you know, you can see you've got some really nice complementary colors here in the in the blanket and in the outfits that they're wearing. Uh, and that will definitely, definitely help. So yes, I agree. Will there be any Black Friday sale on full presets? Lynn, if you are signed up to the newsletter, you will find out first if and what uh, discounts we will have. So we'll share that via the newsletter. Uh, of course, it'll be on the Archipelago Collective Facebook page and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, if you are signed up to the newsletter, you will find out as soon as anything goes live. This is perfect for holiday minis and family photos. Thank you, Mary. This photo is a vibe, says Amy. Love that. How do you select a single person in the mask? So that's a feature that's a part of the later versions uh, of Lightroom. So the AI masks were introduced in an earlier version and then one of the most recent updates up, uh, added some new features related to AI, uh, which now allow you to select people. So rather than just subject, which uh, if you think about the photos that you take of course the subject will often be a person if you're a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer not necessarily always you could shoot an object and it would still select that as the subject it's generally whatever's in focus is what it will do when it selects subject uh, but select people is going to find all of the people in the scene and when you choose that you now see this little area at the bottom which shows all of the people so you can either choose them individually or you can just do all people at the same time so very very handy that's uh, a very new uh, addition to Lightroom, so make sure you are up to date. These presets have changed my editing time so much. Still learning and understanding which AI features, however, they have been easy to work with. Thank you, Charlie. Appreciate that. All right, next image. This one's by Nicole. So we've got another uh, daylight image here. Um, obviously, the white balance is a little bit off, but we can correct that uh, when we start editing. But yeah, we've got this beautiful window light coming in, hitting the subjects here. Now, obviously, what's been done really well here by Nicole is positioning the subjects very, very close to the window so that um, they can take advantage of that natural light. Uh, it does look like there is some um, artificial light in this particular location because you can see some reflected off the air conditioning ducts at the top here and a little bit reflected there as well. Um, but by positioning them near the daylight, which is now the main source of light, it's gonna make that uh, artificial light, you know, a minimal aspect. It's not uh, casting any of that light on the subjects. All the light is coming from the window for the subjects, which is gonna make it super easy to edit. It's gonna make it similar to shooting outdoors, but you get the benefit of that kind of cave light style where you've got light coming in on one side and it's then very dark behind the subject. So really beautiful photo here by Nicole. 
So let's go ahead and correct the white balance. So it does need warming up a fair amount and we need to bring the exposure up a decent amount too, probably somewhere around about there. Tiny little bit of a straighten as well. Probably about there. Yeah, cool. So that's looking good as a starting point. And let's go ahead in lens correction. Yeah, so lens corrections aren't on and I can see there is a bit of darkening in the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply lens corrections. So that's gonna fix the distortion. There was a little bit and fix the vignette as well. So that's before and after. And let's see for this one. Let's go with Redwood, Archipelago Redwood. So this is one of our newer releases as part of Archipelago. So this is available from archipelagopresets.com. Uh, and with this, I'm gonna go for Redwood 5, which is one of my favorites in this set. So now that I've applied the preset, you can see the how the highlights and the shadows have been rendered by the preset and you may want to go ahead and correct the exposure after. It's always good to do it first, just so you've got a good starting point, but then you might find, dependent on the image, you need to increase or decrease that after applying the uh, preset. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit more, somewhere around there. Again, in this case, I'm just looking at the subjects. I'm not too worried about what's going on in the rest of the scene. I'm just looking at the subjects, getting the exposure balance for them, and then we can look at the rest of the scene after. So we've got the Redwood profile set to 100 as the default. This is it at zero. And 200 and I really like the look so I'm going to go for this uh, quite high let's go for a, a round number to please the audience 140 uh, that's looking really nice to me so that's Redwood 5 we've increased the Redwood profile to 140 uh, and we've just corrected the white balance and straightened the image uh, we'll use a couple more tools that are in Redwood so again painterly uh, this is one of my favorites uh, just for kind of softening out that background bringing emphasis to the subject. So in this case, you can see just a little bit of the detail in the brickwork and in the ducts, and it just kind of softens it up whilst keeping it there. So I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm gonna keep it probably at 100 as the default. Uh, and again, that doesn't affect the subjects in any way. So you don't need to go in and manually mask or anything like that. It's gonna do that automatically. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply background vignette. So I wanna emphasize the darkness. Now, obviously you remember I went into lens corrections and uh, turned on lens corrections, which part of that was removing the vignette that was naturally there in the lens. Uh, but the reason that I do it that way around is the vignette that's uh, produced by the lens will affect the entire image. Whereas the vignette tool in um, the Redwood set is not gonna affect the subjects. So this is it at the default 100. If I increase this all the way, you can see, if you look at the subject's foot just here, this is it at zero and this is it at 200. So they are not affected by this mask. So I can now use this to create a vignette that doesn't affect the subjects. So again, I'm gonna go relatively, probably go about there. So set that to 90. So nothing too crazy, just backed it off just a little bit from the default. But again, it just brings a little bit of that darkening down uh, around the subjects without affecting those subjects. So let's take a look, here's before and here's after. Really, really nice edit. And show you the details. Don't think there's anything else I'd do to that. I think that's looking really good as it is. This was shot on a 35mm lens, one of my favorite focal lengths to use. Uh, ISO 400, f1.4, so nice and wide. These skin tones, heart eyes, says Chris. Love the reflection in the window of her dress. Yes, I love that as well. I did notice that when I was looking at these earlier. Just updated Lightroom after waiting until I'd finished delivering an album. Absolute game changer. Yes, Lloyd, 100%. Um, it's always worth waiting until you kind of done the important stuff first because there's nothing worse than uh, you know, something going wrong with your Lightroom catalog or something, but it's it's definitely worth doing the updates. You know, uh, wait until you've got a moment where you've not got loads of work on, you can do the update, but get it done because they really are a game changer. These last few updates have been absolutely amazing. And, you know, we're taking advantage of this, especially with the newer presets that are being released. We're using these AI masks and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, really, really worth doing those updates and benefiting from what Adobe are putting out. 
Do your presets adjust to the specific camera profiles you used to take the photo? No, they do not, Michael. So uh, the camera profiles, um, uh, well, a couple of things to note. So camera profiles, generally speaking, if you're shooting in RAW, they kind of have no bearing at all. Um, if you are shooting in JPEG or if you're transferring images from the camera in JPEG, then they're quite important because that's going to be baked into the JPEG. But the, the profile that's used when you shoot the image, if you're shooting in RAW, doesn't matter. It can be changed after. Uh, it's not baked into the RAW file. And in actual fact, uh, the kind of default setup of, of Lightroom, when you import an image, a lot of the time it will switch that to an Adobe profile anyway. So it'll switch it to Adobe Color in most cases um, as default. Of course, you can go back into the profile browser and you can, you can select your camera matching profile. Um, but when you use an Archipelago or a Quest preset that has creative profiles, that profile will replace whatever's set. So whether that's the Adobe one or the camera matching one, it'll be replaced. And that profile contains its own adjustments, its own tonality, all that kind of stuff. And because it's a creative profile, it has a slider so you can adjust it. The camera matching profiles, the Adobe profiles, they don't have that. They are just a little bit of a, a base. They're very, very uh, neutral. They, they're not very over stylized. Uh, whereas with the creative profiles, um, you know, they can be all sorts of different things. Um, as you look through our sets, they all do something totally, totally different, but they just give you creative control to kind of do a lot more with your images. So yeah, it doesn't matter what you shoot in, it's not gonna affect the image if you're shooting in RAW and using our presets, that'll get switched out anyway. I need to invest in Redwood, says Amy. Yes, you do. I'm biased, but I would say yes, you do. Downloading this month's Quest set right now. Thanks for the reminder. No problem, Melanie, you are gonna love it. All right, so we have got the last image here. This one is by Sigrid. Uh, Sigrid's actually been featured on an Archipelago edit session previously. So this will be the second free preset collection that Sigrid's won. Uh, so yeah, just a reminder, if you do submit images, you know, submit as many as you like, whenever you like. Um, you, yeah, I'll, I'll pull from that pool of images for all the future Archipelago edits live streams. And if your image gets picked and used in a live stream, you will get a free preset collection. So Sigrid, uh, you're gonna get your second free preset collection. So well done. This is another gorgeous photo by you. Uh, this one is shot on a 35 mm lens. Uh, again, ISO 400, uh, 160th of a second F 2.2. I uh, love this, really, really nice scene. Really cool wallpaper. The couple look very, very cool here as well. Love this photo. So let's start by just doing a couple of tweaks to the image. I'm just gonna go ahead, actually, I'm gonna go into the transform. I'm gonna do full just to make sure the lines are all looking good and let's make sure we are nice and straight and I think uh, central composition is what's gone for on this so I'm going to emphasize that by just making sure it is in the center and the benefit of that is we do get to crop out the uh, fire exit sign at the top so I'm just going to bring this down a little bit just so that's not in the scene at all that's looking good to me now unfortunately it is in the scene still because it's down here. Um, but I love this. It's uh, obviously a prism or some type of reflection. I know if you hold your phone up to the front of a lens, you can get a look like this as well. So it's either a prism or a phone or some way of reflecting the top of the scene across the bottom. I love doing that. It's, it's such a cool effect, especially when you've got something like this um, light uh, feature here reflected down at the bottom and this amazing wallpaper it looks super, super cool. So great work with that Sigrid, uh, but it does mean we've got this sign down here. Now I'm not going to use the uh, the fill to try and remove that because it's just not going to work. The pattern is not going to work, uh, but you might have better luck with that in Photoshop um, if you spend the time and kind of tweak that. So that's probably what I would look to do if this was my photo. But for now, I'm going to leave that in there. I'm going to probably crop up just a little, maybe about there. That's looking good to me. Uh, Exposure is looking pretty good. Now with this image, uh, the, the light, we've got a mix. You know, we've got the natural daylight coming in from the left of the scene here, which is hitting the subjects. It's quite bright. But then obviously we've got this amazing uh, light feature at the top here, which is, you know, very, very warm. Um, so we have got mixed light and some of that light is hitting the subjects here, but the benefit is that the daylight is bright enough to offset most of that. If the daylight wasn't quite as bright or if this light here was much brighter, it could be a problem because you could have then that mixed lighting situation that I was talking about on the subjects themselves. 
and that might be a bit of an issue when it comes to editing getting things like consistent skin tones and that kind of thing but in this scene it's probably just about right like if it was any any more one way or the other it might be an issue but i think there's just the right amount of daylight coming in hitting the subjects and then we've got that little bit of warm lighting um, above them and below them which i think is really cool so i'm going to go for a more editorial style look for this one so let's just have a quick look at the white balance i think it's looking good uh, exposure looking good but i'm going to go for nomad so i love nomad for that sort of editorial feel and six is what i tend to go for yeah love that there's some really nice presets in this collection, but I think six is what I would go for. Just because I think that the tones complement the scene. I love the wallpaper. I love what it's doing to skin tones. Um, I love how it's muting down the, the highlights as well. So Nomad six, let's go ahead and apply that. Got the Summer Fields profile that's set to 100 as default. I probably wouldn't play around with that too much. Uh, Summer Fields adds a nice rich warmth to the image. Now, I don't want to emphasize that too much. and I don't want to decrease it. I'm going to leave it at the default of 100 because I think what it's doing is a nice job of warming up the, the kind of highlights, um, retaining the difference between the warmth and the lights here and the daylight. But I love what it's doing to the wallpaper. Skin tones are really nice. So let's take a look at the exposure. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. I want to keep it relatively moody because I think it suits this uh, photo. So that's looking good to me. Uh, let's have a look. I think lens corrections are on. Yeah, that's already on as default. So profile, I might back it off just a tiny little bit. Yeah, so just a little bit of a decrease of summer fields just so that it's not too overly warm. And then I think the only other thing I would do is probably silver reflector because it is an addiction. Um, that is Richard's fault for creating silver reflector. I use it on basically everything. Um, but yeah, love what it's doing here. So it's just bringing out the exposure on the subjects, darkening down the background. I'm just gonna use it in a little bit more of a subtle way. So probably around about there, 30, I'll say to 38 to keep everyone happy. Um, so 38, uh, and that's with silver reflector. So that's just now popping those subjects, keeping the uh, background just a little bit darker, but we can still see all the details in the wallpaper. We can still see the beautiful light fit-ins. I love what it's done with the color of the wood in this um, sort of like unit over here. Super nice, let me zoom in. There's all the details. Of course, we've got uh, grain on as part of this um, preset, but you can remove that if you want to, but I'm gonna leave it because I like it. Show you this side by side. Love that tonality. That that sort of uh, greenish tone that it introduces, uh, and the way that it sort of mutes the highlights. I absolutely adore it. Very very editorial feeling. And let me show you. There's the before when it loads. There we go. There's before and there's after. Melanie says the colors of the edit go with the image perfectly. Yeah, I, I felt so. I think this is a really, really nice preset uh, collection. Nomad in general has a lot of variety, but I think six for this just suits this so well. Let's see what else people are saying. Sorry, I can't see the group of people mask. Are you in Lightroom Classic or Lightroom 6? Lightroom Classic, so. Um, Lightroom Classic is our preference. We would always recommend using Lightroom Classic. Uh, the later versions of Lightroom CC will have this functionality as well. They get updated alongside uh, Lightroom Classic, but uh, there are some features that are missing um, in Lightroom CC. So we always recommend Lightroom Classic, but obviously it's whatever you prefer. Uh, but Lightroom 6, which I think is the last standalone version of Lightroom that you could buy, uh, that won't have all of these new features. It'll be missing quite a, quite a bit. The masking panel won't work the same. Uh, it won't have the preset amount slider. There's various different things that that will be uh, lacking. So it's definitely worth getting Lightroom Classic. We're on version 12, I think now. Um, so lots of updates uh, since Lightroom 6. This is incredible, I'm glad I'm not the only one who's addicted to silver reflector. Yeah, Lloyd, it's a genuine problem. It's a genuine, genuine problem. I actually even use it on my film photos now as well. So when I get my scans back, I'll just use a little bit of silver reflector on my film photos, because it just, it makes them look so good. All right, what else have we got in here? Colors of the, yeah, nice. I want this wallpaper, says Joey. Yes, it's lovely. Fantastic edit, thank you so much. So subtle, love it. Thank you, Suzanne. 
Amazing, so that's the last image. Let me go back out here so you can see. It'll just take a second to update, but you'll see all the edits appear. I think these two are taking a bit longer. There we go. So there's all the edits. Uh, again, thank you to the photographers that have submitted the images. Uh, really gorgeous photos. Like I said, you're all gonna be getting a free preset collection uh, of your choice. Uh, Regna says, I missed a few minutes. What preset was it? Uh, in the last image, it was Nomad preset six. So that was Nomad. Uh, can you show the before and after on the silver reflector? Uh, yes, absolutely. Let me jump back into the image. On the last photo, let's have a look. So, so silver reflector is actually two separate masks that are applied at the same time. So if I just turn off the whole masking panel, it's very subtle in this. I've not used it um, too over the top, but that's with and that's without. So nice and subtle but it definitely just draws your eye to the subjects just a little bit more some images i use loads if you've got an image where your subject is uh, backlit you you can crank the silver reflector up and it works wonders in just bringing out the detail in the subjects and just bringing down the the uh, light in the background works really really well for that so it depends on the image as to how strong you need this to be but of course because you've got the amount slider dead easy to dial in Cool, so shortly we will be announcing a winner of the pre-release copy of Halite. But before we do that, let me talk a little bit more about Halite. So like I said, I'm gonna be doing a live stream in a week and a half's time. So make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. You'll get notifications and things like that uh, when we go live. Uh, so definitely come back and check that out so you can see what Halite is all about. Um, the, the set is absolutely amazing. There's four color presets, two black and white presets, and this is a, a full standalone preset collection, uh, which will be released on archipelagopresets.com at the usual price of $98. But if you are a Quest subscriber, and this is the news I want to share, if you are a Quest subscriber, on the 1st of December, the set that we'll be releasing as part of the uh, December Quest membership is going to be Halite. So you're going to get your hands on Halite, which will be priced at $98 when it goes live on archipelagopresets.com. You're going to get that as part of your subscription. So if you pay $8 and become a Quest member now, you can be able to download uh, the Wayfarer set, Wayfarer SE, which is the current month set. And then on the 1st of December, you will get your hands on Halite as our gift to you as a thank you for being a Quest member. So very exciting news. Not only that, you're going to get it early as well. So it's actually not going to be released on Archipelago presets uh, dot com until later so you're going to get your hands on it early and you're going to get it as part of your quest subscription so there's a lot to love about it uh, there's actually more that i want to share as well for the bdis of you i'm not going to tell you too much about this but for the bdis out there you might have seen at the top left if i switch back to here at the top left there's a little set here that's called top secret codename frosty i wonder what that's all about I just open that and close it. Oh, that's it. I'm not showing you anymore. I'm not telling you any more about it, but that is a treat coming to our Quest subscribers a little bit later uh, in December. So again, if you join us for the live stream, uh, the next live stream where I'll be showcasing Halite, I'm also going to tell you about that little secret surprise as well. So definitely come and join me. Definitely make sure you're on Quest. There's a lot to love about that. So like I said, <laughs> Lauren says, so sneaky. Yes. Uh, like I said, we're going to be announcing a winner shortly. So that's going to go into the live chat. Uh, we'll be uh, having at least one person winning the, uh, the pre-release copy of Halite. So you're going to get it before anyone else. You'll get to brag and show all your edits with Halite before everyone else does. Uh, and then, of course, on the 1st of December, the Quest members will get their hands on that. Chris says, Frosty what? Yes. Shh. Secrets. There we go. The winners of the pre-release uh, of Halite presets are... Uh, we've got Chine, amazing. Well done, Chine. That was good, uh, worth you being here half an hour before the stream started. Uh, Alexandra, Suzanne, and Joel. Wow, amazing. We are dishing out the presets. You're all going to get your hands on a pre release copy of Halite. Super exciting. Reach out to us on the email that's on the screen there. Uh, we'll get those sorted out for you. Get your hands on them. Definitely share your edits in the Archipelago Collective as well. Show off 
you know, you got to. Uh, and then for everyone else that didn't get that chance to get the, the set early, you will get it on the 1st of December if you are a Quest member. So definitely sign up now if you're not already. And then, like I said, there's more to come, more exciting things to come. So definitely come back and join me uh, for the next uh, stream. If you aren't already as well, just make sure you subscribe to the channel. You'll get a little notification when we go live and all that kind of stuff. But there's lots of great stuff on there. There's over 100 videos on there now. So tutorials, uh, there's more Lightroom tips and tricks. Uh, there's uh, editing techniques there's all sorts of things on there um, so definitely go and check all that stuff out and while I've got your attention before you go anywhere give this video a like that'll just push it out to a few more people as well really really appreciate it but thank you so much for joining it's been an awesome stream as it always is really appreciate you being here and interacting in the chat as we go through uh, and I will see you in the next one